teacher? Hmm. I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. I have several questions. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve? To have no technique. Very good. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? There is no opponent. And why is that? Because the word I does not exist. So, continue. A good fight should be like a small play, but played seriously. A good martial artist does not become tense, but ready. Not thinking, yet not dreaming. Ready for whatever may come. When the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. It hits all by itself. Now, you must remember, the enemy has only images and illusions behind which he hides his true motives. Destroy the image, and you will break the enemy. The it that you refer to is a powerful weapon, easily misused by the martial artist who deserts his vows. For centuries now, the code of the Shaolin Temple has been preserved. Remember, the honor of our brotherhood has been held true. Tell me now the Shaolin commandment number 13. A martial artist has to take responsibility for himself and to accept the consequences of his own doing. I'm ashamed to tell you now, among all the Shaolin men I have taught, there is one who has turned the ways of knowledge and strength to his own base ends. He has perverted all we hold sacred. His name is Han. In defiance of all our beliefs, he has brought disgrace to the Shaolin Temple. So, it is now for you to reclaim our lost honor. Yes, I understand.
Forest fan, my name is Ross Simeon the New, and I'm here representing the Fan Project 315 Tyseti Studio. Right now I'm in Buffalo, New York, below for the Upstate family, and um, I'm here at the ASCAT conference um, that they have every year when they decided to do it in Buffalo this year. So I was invited to come participate, and um, I'm glad I did because you see who's in front of me, you know what I mean? And in Syracuse, you don't get these opportunities every day. So, brother, what's up? EM Hotel, I'm Pooja Sinevne, Dua Hotel. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Brother Infidisha, like I said, brother, I've been watching um, the DVDs for years, literally. Um, and I love the information you shared, the knowledge, the wealth of knowledge you have on the meta nature. You know what I mean? And I learned so much from that, man. That's why when I see you, I resonate. You know what I mean? And it's a, a privilege to be even talking to you right now, brother. So, um, you know, let us know why you're here, what you're doing, and, you know, share some information with the upstate there because okay. we don't get this every day. Peace and harmony. Ankh Uja Seneb Neb. I give you all divine peace and harmony. I'm here, I'm a speaker. Uh, I just spoke here at the Madhu Netcher Conference on the importance of culture uh, within spirit, understanding the Madhu Netcher. And so it's a spiritual language that is based and rooted on African culture. So that was my presentation. Uh, it was a plenary, so I got a chance to speak to the whole family here. And I got a chance to be with one of my former teachers, Sister Riketi Aman, who just spoke. So, and she basically reiterated all the concepts that I did in my presentation. So that lets me know that um, I'm moving in the right direction. I'm ascending, moving up to the fourth and fifth dimension with glory and with defense. Any questions? You know, what made you resonate towards the meta nature, learning it, understanding it? What, yes. Mm. What made you do that? Well, this has been a long journey. Uh, you know, uh, even in uh, uh, the 1960s, I was an Africana study major before African studies departments came into existence. So I was always trying to learn as much as I can about the African continent, the African culture, and the Africans throughout the diaspora. Uh, and then uh, early in the 1970s, I met Dr. Ben. And then Dr. Ben kind of focused on Kemet, the Nile Valley. And I was able to travel five times to Kemet with Dr. Ben. And then I met Sister Ricchetti. And then I says, okay, now it's time to zero in on the language. And so, you know, like it was a progression. I already had great knowledge of the Africans throughout the diaspora. I lived in Tanzania, traveled to over 23 countries on the African continent. So I knew the general, you know, concept of the African persona. Um, ancient Kemet was kind of like the classical African. And then the Madunetje was the classical language. So why mess around with the roads that are leading back to Kemet? Study Kemet. And then I can go back out and begin to understand why they're doing that. So when I'm talking with people who's, who went to Ifa or the Yorba, I can see that that's a root from ancient Kemet. When I'm talking to people who know Vudam, the root I can see is ancient Kemet. When I talk to people who are naturopath, holistic healers and herbalists, the root is in ancient Kemet. I talk to people who are massage therapists, the first concept we get from that, the root is in ancient Kemet. People who are astrologers and numerology, the root is in ancient Kemet. So all roads were leading back to the Nile Valley. So I said, I, I better get into the Nile Valley and get a great understanding. As a result, I can talk with people who are nuclear physicists, mathematicians, scientists, and I'm still over their head because of the knowledge I learned in the Madhu Netcha. It's the foundation of all the studies we know in the Western world. And we're only playing with it. Madhu Netcha is going in real deep. My former teacher, Dr. Jacob Crothers, used to say, this is deep thought. Madhu Netcha comes from deep thought because we are our consciousness. You know, and our consciousness is deeper than the planet Earth. We are astrological people, spiritual people, far beyond this planet. And the Madhu Netcher zooms in on that. 
So that, brothers, you understand? So I was resonating on that energy because I'm in the process of ascending. How long did it take you to catch on to the language? And how did you feel when you finally said, I got it? Well, let me say this here. I'm still progressing and still learning the language, okay? Um, even as an instructor, as a teacher of it. But it took about a good two years before I can say, and now I tell people, I read the Madhu Nature like you read the New York Times, you know? Um, and most of the people who are reading the Madhu Nature are learning from the Western world. And the Sister Riketti is even telling us that that's not what our ancestors were saying, their translations. Some of their definitions in those books, the, you know, the Grandma, or Gardner, Allen, they're excellent for what they were about, but that's not what our ancestors were saying. So, you know, I talk about understanding symptomatic thought versus symbolic thought. And symptomatic thought is the foundation before you get to the symbolic. Other than that, you just be bamboozled. Okay? So, uh, and brother, you know, I just encourage people, just jump in. All of us, this is our classical language. You know, so all of us should need to reach in and grab and get some type of foundation. Get, learn some words that you can just speak to your family. Even if we just say hotep to each other, shim hotep as we go in, im hotep as we come, embrace each other, uncle jasineb. I see people tattooing it all over themselves. Well, let's start using these words. Um, so much I got on my mind, you know what I mean? Um, so what is you doing like, you know, with your, your table and... Well, if you look down real quick, you'll see crystals and gemstones. You'll see African culture aspects. And you'll see Sa, which is spiritual protection. Not jewelry, Sa, spiritual protection. And so all of them are rooted in the metals, the crystals, the gems, dealing with what I call the mineral domain. So if you understand the mineral domain, then you move to the plant domain, then you move to the animal domain, the human, the spirit. Okay, so this is to let people know, like I'm also a doctor of naturopath holistic healing. I'm a crystallologist, okay, a herbologist and all of that. So I teach colorology as a foundation, understanding the vibrations of energy. And so, like your shock, so-called seven chakra centers. Well, most of us as Africans, we have 12 major chakra centers. Seven is a downgrade. Okay, but learn the seven, and then you can move up, ascend. You know, so I, I teach this as part of my comedic spiritual teachings. Uh, have you seen the jewelry like from Tet Ankh Amen? Or like, the, you see that Sa? All these gemstones are being used. Every time they show a Nimbus crown, they show the blue stone, lapis lazuli. On top of the... Um, uh, the blue stone uh, lapis lazuli right here mm. right okay. that represents the brow the pine uh, the pineal gland okay so that's like uh, the intellect and it's the, it's the only uh, organ I mean not organ but the only um, gland that connects you as an antenna to the spiritual cosmos okay so some of these colors tap into that like yellow this is uh, golden topaz, right? That, the solar plexus, so that, this Ra, the sun, energy, infinite energy tapping you in, you know, uh, green healing, like, just by rubbing the stone, you can dissipate pain, stuff like that, you see what I'm saying? So, this was taught in ancient Kemet. See, I don't play with this, I live this. This is a way of life, this is 24, in fact, 24 seven doesn't even classify it because I'm still in Western time. I'm beyond Western time. Okay, all right? <laughs> Yo, man, um, I used to have a study group called the African Urban Perspective. You know, we used to meet once a week and study, study African um, culture, history, and spirituality. And we got into um, the script, the comedic script. Mm -hmm. And what we found out is that the letter K, which is represented by the basket, basket. in the hieroglyph, right. is an original African um, letter. Yeah. And I never knew that, man. Right. Usually the C that we have, the guttural C from Europe, doesn't exist in any African languages. Right. 
So that's why even some of us, like, we write Africa with a K in it, yeah. you know, stuff like that. People think we're just trying to be eccentric and different. Yeah, no, awesome. we're tap no, we're tapping into our roots. We, you know, that's all. You know, Sankofa, go back and fetch what you have forgotten. Forgot fetch what you have lost and bring it forward to the future. Sister Riketti did a beautiful thing about even us as African cultural minds doing the Madhu Necha have to begin to create new Madhu words, you know, to represent airplane, computer, video camera. How do we say that in Madhu Necha? You know, so our consciousness have to come together to move to that. Yes, you know, so making it an everyday language. But I say to my readers, if you are, if ancient Kemet, if you're interested in it, if you're only learning from European books, if you're only learning from European universities and you're only learning from Western minds, you're still on the outside looking in. You got to actually take this language with some African scholars who are enculturating you, uh, who are teaching it as a spiritual concept, not a religious, but a spiritual concept. But you got to learn some Badu Netcha. So therefore you learn symptomatic thinking versus just symbolic thinking. So you won't be bamboozled. I'd like to thank you very much. If I've said anything of importance, use it right away. If I've said anything that offend you, get over it. Now, brother, um, how could we get you, you know, up into like Syracuse, Rochester area to do a lecture? What does that entail that you don't? You just put some pennies together, give me a place to stay, feed me, donation, and we make it happen. Syracuse is what maybe a three hour, four hour ride from me. That's all. I'm in Harlem. We have you in Rochester because I'm working with the Federal Douglas Resource Center. Right. And they have more of a conscious community. So uh, if anything, we'll try to get you there. Right. You know, and um, um, hopefully you got a card or something. Yes, sir. That I can get in contact with you. And uh, we're going to make this happen, bro. All right. I appreciate that. My number is 347 792 9138. 347 792 9138. And let's make it happen. Shim Iim Hotep. Unk Uja Seneb Neb. Dua Inter.
He was initiated as a Coptic priest in Africa, later to become a Kemetic high priest of Kara Tuhuti, Heru Nebu Pe'a Educational and Cultural Organization. He is one of the rare certified teachers of the Madhu Nature and a doctor of naturopathy. For over 45 years, he trained in the Menchu Holistic Healing Sciences and is a Grand Master of the African Menchu Science of Kupiani and Gumi, Aha Kemet, and the Kemet Meditation and Breathing System of Ma'at Aku Ba'a. He is the author of several books. His latest book, Spiritual Warriors Are Healers, is the best ever among African bookstores nationwide. Currently, Indonesia operates a cultural holistic vending booth in Harlem, New York, called Black Gold. He is a professor of the Meadow Nature at Essex County Community College in New Jersey. Indonesia was my son, not my son, my nephew, 35, over 35 hundred years ago, and you might ask, how do I know that? Because I study ancient Kemetic science, and I've studied my past, and past of many others. So, a welcome to Mbubishi, and his, his, um, his presentation is Kemetic Spirituality and Culture, is the foundation of understanding the Madhu Nature. Welcome, Mbubishi. Ancestors talked about 
that we are oblivious of and haven't even begun to muster. The spiritual system was designed for you to develop character. You know this religion, that's not the, that's not the, 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 the major thing. In spirituality, are you a better person? Have you developed character? Are you one with your environment? Are you enhancing your environment? And so now, going back to fetus, when it comes, when the water breaks, it descends and loses its memory. And now it needs a good savior, a good teacher, to help them move back up to the fourth dimension from which they descend. Right now, we're talking in the third dimension. And some of us are operating probably on the animal, the second dimension and the first dimension, okay? Because we're not trying to ascend. We don't, that's not even on our agenda. Somebody told us to get a good job. So that we can get a what? A good education. And what your parents meant by a good job usually was a Western orientated European education. So that you can basically work for them, not so that you can ascend. Not so that you can reach a higher consciousness. Not so that you can move from the third dimension back to the fourth. That's what our great masters have been. They move back to the fourth dimension. When you're dreaming, you're dreaming in the fifth dimension. But you don't have control over that 99% of us. There's a few of us who have mastered the idea of moving back out. So you can't go to the fifth dimension in your physical body. But fourth dimension prepares you for that. And your sixth dimension, there are other entities there. When I talk about other entities, I want to be real clear. They are free moving, free spirit, free thinking beings that have a body. Free moving, free spirit, free thinking beings that don't have a body. We happen to be the ones that have a body, but you are not your body. You are your consciousness. Your body is just a container, and we've caught up in the illusion that the ego has created, that you are this individual personality. No. When I was in Tanzania, they used to tell us, you don't have a thing. Your thing is our thing. Because we are collective. Once African people start to think like that, we begin to move on a higher plane, collectively. All of this information age is to keep you in 3D lockdown. All of the advertisements, all of the magazines, the television, news, they are to keep you here. Because you have the ability to go way beyond where any of them can go. They can't even dream about where you are. And so they have to keep you aspiring for a job, aspiring for a career, as opposed to aspiring to be the best you, you can be and to complete your mission of why you were sent there so that you can begin to ascend. So now, the Madunecha is our classical language. I need to say that every group of people has classics. Classics simply mean the best that you have to offer that explains the essence, your center of who you are. And so our classical, now we can speak all the African, I say all African, you can learn as many African languages as you can. Yoruba, Kiswahili, learn all of them, learn as many as you can comprehend. But I will say this, most of them will not change your paradigm from this 3D life. Madhu Netra is one of the only languages that still exists. It's not a dead language. It has never died. It is one of the only languages that grounds you, centers you, and teaches you symptomatic thinking. Symptomatic thinking versus just symbolic thinking. The Madhu Netra is set up in such a divine way is that at first, it understands, it, our ancient ancestors understand that the human mind learns and develops symptomatically. Symptomatically means it is what it is. That I understand it is an illusion, but within the concept of the spectrum of the illusion, 
This is what that is. A tree is a tree. The dumb beetle is a dumb beetle. That's first. So I'm learning symptomatically first. I'm learning what is the essence of that thing. Now, once I understand the essence of that thing, now I can understand this symbolic meaning. What does it do? So we'll take the scatter, the dumb beetle. It is a miracle. It is a 
a life-giving source of energy that you can absorb spiritually that can help you attune the physical body and help you on your ascension. Oh, since you put it like that. Well, in order to understand that, you need to understand colorology. The light spectrum from colors of violet and purple and those colors going all the way down to deep red maroon and then it goes back to black. So black is on both sides of the spectrum. Black is the essence of all things. That's why our people didn't have a problem identifying with black. Today, we, people, I ain't black, okay, I'm brown. You know, no, that's just like melanin, melanin, and all those different colors of black in the shades that all the way to pink melanin. So Europeans have melanin or they wouldn't be here. That's pink melanin. You happen to be blessed with brown, black melanin, okay, higher octave. So now, once you understand that color spectrum, now you can understand the mineral spectrum because the minerals will take on those elements. So something like an amethyst stone is purple, it's vibrating on your what? Pituitary gland, the master gland, at the top octave. Then you can have a stone like lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli, one of the most used stones in ancient Kemet, operating on your what? Your pineal gland. You notice I got glands here, understanding the human body, right? Then I'll go to something like a blue lace agate, and that will operate on your communication. Or I'll use turquoise, operating on your communication, your thyroid gland. Then I'll go to like rose quartz or uh, operating on the heart, but the emotional heart, because I use like melokite, the dark green, for the physical heart. This is all vibrating in terms of scales of octaves of energy. This is all in the Madhu lecture. I know some people teach the waves of energy. It's a letter, it's the letter N. It can be a preposition or article, it can be what? To or towards. But towards or to what? A nature or a human being. They place an ancient covenant. They place human beings in the same category as the nature group. So that's what, see, we have no clue on actually who we are. We are divine spiritual beings just inside of this physical body for a second. And our job is to go back into a century. But first, we got to get to the fourth dimension. Okay, all right. So, I use this as a wave of energy. Since all energy moves in waves. I say water is three of these. Just like in the formula in English, H2O is water. Okay. And since I just mentioned water, let me say this. Water holds more memory than any compound molecule on the planet Earth. So when you speak into your water, your water holds that. Help me here, the earth is about what? 70%, 70% water? Give or take a percent? Your body is approximately what? 70% water, give or take a percent? Hmm? Water holds memory. You look in the mirror and you go, oh man, this is a bad hair day. Yeah, you know what you're, yeah, oh, wait till you see tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Or if you say stuff like, oh, I'm so clumsy, right? The legend saying, well, wait till you get to the steps. You know, okay. okay. You got to speak to your water what you want. There's a Japanese scientist called Moto. He has a book where he speaks into his water. He says, peace, harmony, love. And he does it in a various different languages because it's the intent, it's the vibration. And the water forms perfect crystals. And then he says things like, you fool, knucklehead, angry. And the water won't form crystals or it's defooled. And so the water understands vibrations. That's a matter of language. It understands vibrations and energy. So that's back to the minerals, that's back to the color. Each vibration is a different color. And so the crystals are at the first level. So the Madhu let you understand that. Have you seen the, the Sa, what we call spiritual protection, you would probably call jewelry of the ancients? Do you see when they have stuff like this? They, turquoise, carnelian, turquoise is communication. I'm trying to communicate with you. This ain't no jewelry, this is Sa. It's 
spiritual enhancement to help me on my journey. So you need to check out your wardrobe to see if you wear jewelry or solid. Is what you're wearing helping you on your journey to ascension or you just trying to be cute? Being cute will keep you ready and 3D like that, okay? <laughs> just in case you didn't know. All right, so now after I have an understanding of the mineral domain, I go to the plant domain. Now I need to sneak something out and I want you to really take this to heart. The ancients have told me this word, myrrh, which means to come to me, and we exchange it as love. And so, to ancient Kevin, love was different from the Western concept of love. Love, by the mirror, this cloud, meant to culture things. So, if you want that end product, I need to cultivate it. So, once I dig the ground up, I put the seed in it, but I just can't leave it. I got to nurture it. So, that's the way a relationship has to be. I plant the initial seed. I nurture it, I water it, I give it love, I read it. And so even if you have children, sometimes you need to pick some of your kids' friends. That's reading. No, that little boy can't come over no more. You read it, you read it, okay? Because you are trying to cultivate love. Now let me say this, once you cultivate love, mer, once two entities, of any form of intelligent energy receives unconditional love, it gives up its secrets. I should say that again. When genuine, unconditional, pure love is transmitted between two entities of energy, it will give up its secrets. So when they ask George Washington Carver, how did you invent 300? different inventions from the peanut. He says, I talked to him, they told me what to do. How do you know what word you should be communicating? When love is transmitted between any two entities, its secrets are love. How? People have seen the Book of Gates. And it shows you the hours of ascending to heaven. So someone says, well, did somebody go and come back and write the notes, left notes? Cliff notes on how to get to heaven. How do we energy? How do we know what crystal does exactly that? Because when what? When love, murder is exchanged, secrets are released. And so that's why most inventors invent in silence with love, whatever they are working with, or just with the divine spirit. If the divine spirit is all then it knows it. So once a love is transmitted between this spirit and the divine spirit, which are part of the one, then secrets are released. Depends on how much you have to ask for the secrets because there's more secrets than your consciousness can handle. And so that's why we always say as spiritualists, when you pray, always ask for specific nature or specific energies to come in age. Don't just say, we're having a blessed gathering here today, and may the ancestors come and join us. <clears throat> That's, uh-uh, don't do that. You might have Uncle Bud who was a pedophile coming. You got, you got ancestors and souls coming in who don't, you don't want in that meeting. So you might have to say, Het haru, mut, accept, sacrament. May you divine women come and surround us, give us your mother the mothering engine and help us with a greater understanding of what we are to do to our hmm? You understand? And then, when you finish, you have to send them back. But, at her room, Tefnut, Sekhmet, Aset, thank you for your communion. Thank you for your divine guidance. May you return to the heavenly world and then we need this. Do y'all understand that? This is important because I hear us doing rituals and it's not correct. We don't, it's, it's, a, it's a process. You call on sacred ancestors and you call by name. And if you don't know specific names, you have to put them in the right category. Maybe you're in a war mode.
made the ancestors who fought and survived in the Middle Passage. May the ancestors who fought on the continent against our invaders. For those ancestors who are courageous in battle, may you be with me at this moment. May a right to my shoulder, Peru, may all of you stand by my side because we are at war. We are at war for our minds, we are at war for our souls, we are at war for the spirit of our consciousness and our people. Do y'all understand that? Okay. We are finishing unfinished business. You honor your ancestors first by speaking their name. So that's why I'm to let you so important. I don't want to say Ramses II. Who's he? wouldn't even know who you're talking about. Ursa my Akra, Satepi Ra, Meli in my act. So that's what you got to get into. That's why you learn. You want to say their name. Then too, you want to deify and do their completed works. And so that's what we're doing here at ASCAP. We are admiring, we're absorbing, and we are using the complete works of our ancestors. But also, you have to complete incomplete works, and that's what we are doing. We need to totally liberate African people everywhere. As long as any African people anywhere is suppressed, right, and enslaved, then that threatens all African people everywhere. It is clear, so that's our job. We don't want to have it so when somebody says, when someone says black, yes, pride is coming from you because you identify that. Yes, we are the greatest people on this planet, and that's that rhetoric. We created civilization. Oh, and let me just talk about that for a second. <laughs> culture and civilization gets confused. Every entity has culture. Culture is how you survive and how you flourish, how you maintain. The caveman had culture. <laughs> Neanderthal had culture. Wolves had culture. But what is civilization? Civilization is when that culture develops a written language, develops a form of economy, basically based on trade, barter, a form of exchange, when it develops cities or architectural structures based upon science and mathematics and an educational system to enhance its existence to record what it has done has a sense of governance with a spiritual center that is civilization the first nation or the first group of people to do that since the last great flood is the ancient Kushites who were the parents to the ancient Kemites. Are we understand that? So we have to be real clear. We birthed civilization. Now, there's been some discrepancy over which language is the oldest. We know that the oldest classical language on the planet, and especially if it has the largest reservoir of information in math, science, prose, art, literature, is Mutumet. In fact, if you take all the ancient languages, that's the Mayan script and all, and put them together, they don't equal one one hundred of what we have in the Mutumet, our classical language. So people, we need to get busy. Our classical language. Learn as many African languages as you want, but learn Mutumet. Okay, now, let me just quickly go back and talk about we know the reason why we understand herbology is because we had a loving relationship with the plants. Remember, anytime two entities express genuine love, mirror, secrets are exchanged. The animal domain. Now, the Europeans like to keep you in the animal domain. And that's okay. If they want to be here, they can stay here. There's an animal domain and a human domain. Most animals cannot use the pineal gland, which allows them to think outside of their original creation. As mighty as the falcon is, it can only do what a falcon was programmed to do or it ceases to exist. As mighty and powerful as a lion is, once it ceases to become a lion by the definition of the nature of its ancestral link, it ceases to exist. Nature will eliminate. Human beings are the only ones that can just be totally crazy and still be functioning in this society. 
We're the only ones that can do suicidal stuff and still be here. We're the only ones that can totally stay out of our mind and be against our creation and still be here. But they're insane. Now you know the perfect definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So you want a nice car in the country with the two and a half kids and puff and visit grandma, but you want to be a descendant African. That's probably not all going to happen. Some way you need to exchange some culture so that you don't have to go visit grandma because grandma will what? Yes, yes. We, had no, we don't have a word for old person. There was no word for off region that we would do next year. There's no word for this. So now, human domain. Human domain means that you have the pineal gland that's operative. I need to say that because there's a people who got pineal glands, but it's not operative. It's not firing off neons. It's not releasing the correct hormones at the right time. You notice even our thugs in the community, they got all this energy for killing each other, but they ain't got no energy for destroying the enemy. <laughs> all right. So hormones is flying, but they're not directed in the right direction because we have cultural insanity. But do nature is one of the healing modalities of cultural insanity. Because the first thing that do nature So I was talking with my former teacher, Sister Ricketti, and we were talking about anybody taking the two nature. We encourage you to go to the park, go to the botanical gardens. Look at the edge. Oh, go see the lotus. You see all these plants that are in the two nature. Go to the zoo. Go in the aquarium. You look at the birds. You go, oh, that bird's in the two nature. Wait a minute. There are more birds in the two nature than any other animal. You need to understand why. Oh, I saw that fish in the Madrid lecture. Oh, I saw that animal in the mm. You need to take these outings as you're learning with Madrid lecture and be able to identify it while you're out in nature. Because Madrid lecture does that. Somebody said, well, look, brother, why is the king of uh, Shinsu Haru, follower of a falcon? Well, I said, well, did you understand falcon? See, that's where it's symptomatic thought versus symbolic thought. He's thinking that you want to be a bird. And you're saying, well, you don't know the symptomatic concept. You see, the falcon flies higher. The falcon, hawk, eagle flies higher than any bird. It has no rivalry in the sky. It is the moon of the sky. It has an extra eyelid that can look directly at Ra, the sun. No other creature can do that without damaging its eye. It can circumnavigate and, and soar in the sky for 10 miles without even moving its wings, right. just being in the car. <laughs> right. Grace. It can spot a mouse while it's hovering a half a mile in the sky under a leaf right. and has 99.0 accuracy as it zips down on it. Pilots, jet pilots, bomb, are all trying to imitate the falcon. They're not trying to imitate a pigeon or a chicken. They're trying to imitate a falcon. The falcon can spot a fish under the water. The fish is traveling this way three knots. He's going this way 50 miles an hour. He calculates the bend of light in the water. The speed of the fish zeroes down. He can go 20, 30 meters under the water. And when he comes up in his tie lines, he has to fish. And guess what? He's dry. Now, a person who understands something that And then the guy says, I'm a mighty falcon. You go, oh, yeah, you got this. You don't want to challenge that. You ain't got no rival. You can't lie. He can calculate it. You, so the rulers of ancient Kenya wanted you to see them in this life. They were human beings, but they wanted you to know that the greatest characteristics of this falcon, symptomatically, we hold symbolic. Y'all with me? Okay, all right, so I need you to say, but now if you only learn symbolic, you miss the whole thing. Here's an example. Racism. Racism is symbolic thought. You never even seen the black people, or your hand feeling. You don't know who they are. You don't know that everything comes from them. 
you don't know that the essence of civilization is theirs. And so you are discriminated against them without knowing any facts. If you don't know the facts, that's not symptomatic. Symptomatic understands the facts. Racism is a disease. Einstein even said that. And it needs to be treated like cancer. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I'm not doubting symptomatic symbolic thought. I'm saying that symbolic thought is dangerous. The Western world is controlling all of us through symbolic thought. And because you don't know symptomatic thinking, then you become a slave. Hitler was able to rule Germany through symbolic thought. And Hitler was a closet Egyptologist. So he changed their symbol to the, the eagle, falcon, just like America, and, all, and had all these Egyptian symbols around him. He took the symbol of unity, which was used by Kemet, Ifa. All these people used this as a symbol of brotherhood. Germany took that sign and made it twisted around and made it meant white brotherhood. Suppress it. So if you don't know symptoms, uh, symptomatic thought, you wouldn't know where he got that from. You said, oh no, he twisted that. And that's what's happening with the economy. That's what's happening in every days of our life. I hear people arguing about the school system. The school system, the way it's designed, cannot help you. And it cannot be fixed. You have to have your own system based upon your own culture, your own aspirations. And what is going to help you ascend? Having three PhDs in this 3D lockdown is not going to help you. All right. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. If you want the PhD, fine. As long as you understand that all that is is a key that will open some doors that you might be closed to you otherwise. But you better get into your culture and into your spirit if you want to ascend. All right? Am I with, everybody with me? Okay. Okay. So once the human being understands their purpose, most people have no clue what their purpose is. And they don't even know what their tools is to acquire their purpose, to fulfill their mission. In the Madhu Nature spiritual reading, it teaches you that. The so-called zodiac is Haru's vision. As Haru witnesses the 12 planets, or the 12 zodiac coming around. The Greeks had no knowledge of this. This is why someone says, oh, I'm cancer. Any cancers in here? Uh, a couple of them. My cameraman don't hit the camera. <laughs> cancer, they got us a crab. No, it's cancer. But don't be like, what he's talking about. And so if you were so-called cancer, you are cancer, which means you are coming into being. You represent transformation. You represent a secret of light. It doesn't say that under that thing yet because they didn't know. That's, this is what happens when you have only symbolic thought. See, you're only regurgitating with somebody else who didn't know. Sir Kett, with a Scorpio. Sir Kett, they saw the Scorpion on her head. They had no idea who the sister was. So they just said, these were called the Scorpion. Sir Kett is a healer. She is a divine medicine woman. She heals people who have a Scorpio bite. <laughs> and things of that nature. But you running around following the imitator, symbolic thought, without going to the what? Symptomatic thought of what is, what is it? Concretely, remember, Madhu Netcha, what it is concrete, what it is abstract, what is the meaning of it, what does it do, and then what is the spiritual connotation? Mm. If I take the jacket, Inku, Anku, so the priest said, let's study this creature. He seems to have a really keen sense of smell. So they find out it's got almost the greatest sense of smell of any creature. That's why we bury people six foot under. Because if you bury them three or four for them, the jackal got you. You be is that grandpa's foot? You know, okay, it's a cat. Okay, right. So now, six foot under. Then they notice that the jackal understands the cycle of transformation. He knows when something is going to decompose past the time where it can't be energy, used energy anymore. And he'll dig it up. He'll eat some raw meat. Swallow it, digest it, vomit it up. Now it is decomposing, ready or feeding to its young. And so the ancients are saying, okay, concretely, 
symptomatically, we see this creature. He has the greatest sense of smell. He understands life and death like the vulture. I can understand life and death. Not only that, it knows what transformation is getting ready to take place. And we're not going to use any jackal. A lot of jackals are brown, reddish brown, but the black jackal is always the head of the pack. So they notice this and know we're going to use the black in pool because he's the head of the pack. That's by nature. And so the Enpu priest becomes Anpu, becomes this black jackal. So at first we knew what it was symptomatically. It's a creature that understands transformation. Symbolically, we know that it's there as a guardian of transformation to participate in the transformation. And spiritually, we know that it's a guide for moving from one stage to the other. But we know this by studying with Dunetra because it teaches us first. We have to learn. How many people are learning with Dunetra? You learn the alphabet first, right? And you have to know symptomatically what is this? This is a cobra. Then you learn the sound. So when I write something like this, Africans in America or Africans in the Caribbean. 
Why don't we know what's happening? Okay? Classically, we've been removed from our cultural paradigm. Okay, so now, but do lecture has to be rooted in culture, it has to be rooted in nature. You need to understand these paradigms. Let me just say this. I said we were from third degree, uh, third dimension. You descended from the fourth dimension in the womb as a master, one who has mastered self, because that's what the real master is. One who understands their own, not personality, personality is the ego. That means you have to suppress the ego so that the spirit can rise, the divine spirit. So that means you gotta what? Gluttony, what? Greed, fear, all those things you gotta move because they, they only exist in your mind. You can't have a date with fear. You can't go to the party with fear. You can't invite fear home. Fear only exists in your mind. Now danger is real. But fear, is an illusion. So you have to be able to conquer those fears to be the spiritual world. You do nature because you're learning symptomatic thought first. Before you learn symbolic, gives you the foundation to understand nature at a more enriched level than just trying to learn it in the book. People, that's why you need to sit at the feet of somebody like Sister McKetty, Brother Mario Beatty, and the various do nature teachers and stuff that were out here. Because we have direct download from the ancestors that have given us a cultural connection to a spiritual essence of the reality of the symptomatic thought that is here. And so if you miss a step, then you're just going to be regurgitating what somebody said. The work like, you're, they still do it today. Egypt, the black land. See, 30 years ago, we wasn't reading the that trick, so they can run that on us. Well, first of all, they didn't want to say black, but then once we start reading this, okay, all right, it's black. But it's the black land. And then I went to Egypt looking for all the black land, you know, the red land, the black land. And then I said, well, that's the same, we use the same way of writing. The same way we write black, when they wrote the black people, the collector, oh, they use the same word. I said, well, did the Nile overflow on the people and leave them black too? <laughs> this is a different black that we're talking about. And then the act, the determinative at the end is this crossroads that means civilization, cultivation, a place where trade takes place. So they're talking about a community. So they're saying the black community. White Egyptologists will not tell you that. Because, brother, if I say you live in a black community, I've heard people you think is there. Right? All right. So let's be real. So they want to keep the black land. So we have to be on our, we got to be on our best game. People, the masters who have mastered those domains. So we had the mineral, the plant, the animal, the human domain. Mastering that means that you have mastered the illusion of what the ego is doing, and you are onto it. And you understand, I'm gonna say something controversial here, so you be with me. You understand that this nonsense that you see all around you was not created by the creator, that it was created by the illusion of the ego. Mm -hmm. And we just happen to be on channel two, so we all see the same illusion. But when you ascend, what do you think a miracle is, people? It's an ascendant master or some being that understands the illusion and can step out of it at will and back. Because it really doesn't exist. And that they understand that yesterday and today and tomorrow is all happening now. That's why grandma can say, don't go on that trip, baby. And you say, oh, come on, grandma. And you don't go, and then you look at the paper, the bus turned over, and everybody got killed. But grandma saw it a week before it happened, because everything that will happen, that has happened, is still happening now. So the grandmasters, the ascended masters, understand that in the fourth dimension. So they can walk into your dream, which is the fifth dimension. Help you and bring you back.
teach you how to communicate with your dreams. So that you can begin to ascend, master of self. You can't master self unless you've mastered the mineral, the plant, and the animal. And now, mastering self is understanding the human as a result of the other four. Now, the fifth dimension, after you have descended from this body, you are already prepared in the fifth dimension because you've been in and out so much, you've been introduced to the divine spiritual beings that are there waiting for you. In every dimension, there are divine spiritual teachers. What does it say? When the student is ready, what? So you got to be ready. So most of us are not going to see no descendant masters in the fifth dimension because we're going to stay on 3D lockdown. Karma. What is karma? Karma is an illusion. Past life oppression or past lives is an illusion. But it's an illusion within the ego that is created, that has become real. And so I want to say, is there something outside the illusion? Yes. Nature, the creator. The creator is there. Heaven is perfect. It is limitless. It is pure joy. It is unconditional love. It is eternal happiness. It is all those things. There is nobody dangling a bone in front of you. There is no consequences. And so when you have consequences, that's created by the ego. And the ego loves you. Look, the ego loves words like this. Oh man, if I had to know now what I knew yesterday. The ego loves that type of stuff. Yeah, because now you really believe that history existed. <laughs> the ego loves those type of things because it fortifies itself. To Madhu nature, the beauty of it also is that if I'm looking at, I explain like a room, but let me just take a, a, a mut, the vulture. So mut, the great mother, the mate of Kuli. Do you notice that all of the nature have a nature connected to it? Because that ankh, symbolic of family, they understand universal masculine, universal feminine. They understand family represents eternity. And so outside is set, and even set tried to have a mate, okay? <laughs> Everybody got a mate and some offspring. Somebody said, hey, Kadisha, you want to meet your Mutimus because he got two mates. He got Shashat and uh, Ma'at. No. These are not real people. See, we're not following people. We're not following a Muhammad, a Jesus, a, a Buddha. We're not. We're following divine principles that enhances your culture that exists inside of your consciousness where the Creator is. The Creator is everywhere. But it talks to you. When you meditate, the Creator is talking to you. When you internally pray and do positive affirmation, you are talking to the Creator. The Creator sees this, this illusion through you. You are a nature. So that's why that wave of energy would be in Pata. Pata, the creative spark of the universe. So you are in Pata. It's two Pata. But if I want to say to Amin Ra, I also have to say in Amin Ra. Because you are like that. But if I'm talking about a place or that object, like the city, I say er connect. And so the ancients understood. See, that's where symptomatic thought is. What? Every time they see the word Tanahisi, or they see the word Kush, Nubia, they try to translate it as the Negroes. <laughs> I'm like, what? What kind of nonsense is that? In the word eternity, sometimes they put, it's the word Nehet. But sometimes they started out with the Nehisi bird. Look up the definition. Don't look their definition. Look up. The Nehisi bird is reverent in Sudan. It represents holiness and divineness. It is a protective energy. So when they're talking about this protective energy, if we don't know symptomatically what the Nehesi bird is, we won't understand why our ancestors put that first. A lot of people just leave it out. Sometimes they even leave the wave of energy out. They just have, <laughs> even though we understand it's nothing, okay? As long as there is energy, 
as long as we are connected, that DNA, then there will always be life. So the Madhu Metric people is our classical language. But my challenge to you is to make sure you understand symptomatic thought. It is what it is within this illusionary context of the reality that we all claim to see. Then you will understand it's symbolic me. Understand, just memorizing text and not understanding the symptomatic, then you're in the same boat as your European colonizers. And you will not resurrect yourself. You will not ascend. The Madhu Netra was there to help you ascend. Let me say this. Before the last great flood, around 10,000 years ago, you know that the, the foundation of what was in ancient Kevin already existed. Masters didn't have a lot of Madhu Netra then, because if you had several masters who were all vibrating on the high fourth and communicating in the fifth dimension, then I can think to you what I want. After the last great flood, a lot was lost, so our ancestors created the Madhu Netra so that the next great catastrophe, we would have records of who we are, where we're supposed to be going, and how great we are. And you are great. Do us So game is sick like a chess move Understand man, I move how the best do And I'm so smooth, flow like press milk do To the babies, this here the ladies Uh, a product of the fucked up fucking 80s They said Ronald Reagan, shit I said Ronald Reagan Cause they don't understand no swine like the bacon Keep it off the plate, I said to keep it off my fork Cause they don't really understand man This Syracuse, New York, this here's right here It's a brand new breed Understand homeboy, it's green when I bleed I said the people when my ancestors' blood run through me I keep it running like a slave do, homie They don't really understand Man, this is my game Seeing T the gift, this here's my game And I'm here to ball out like Michael Jordan I can pass the torch but who's rewarding? And you see here, homeboy, and this is my thing, and then I understand it. Shit, I'm going for rings, and I don't mean the ones, I mean the vampire fame, cause you don't really understand, homeboy. Here's the thing, I could break it down, and I could give a new lesson, but y'all don't really understand, man. My tongue is my weapon, more powerful than that pen of the sword, and that day I quote from Marcus Garvey, here, my lord, cause y'all don't really understand the pain I felt. Is if they dig, then they know why the feds is felt, uh. No matter of fact, man, the feds is felt Around here, they call it Rico Here we go, I mean another year And another Rico case Another young boy gone, another misface uh, A dead soul and he can't be misplaced They don't really understand this, he is disgrace uh, The pain in my heart, it can't be felt Cause if it did, these niggas probably go and run somewhere else I mean, they coming out the hole I call them little rats I mean, this mouse, it ain't a game I mean, and that's that fact And I can keep it going But y'all don't really know it Cause see, my my mental game, homeboy, is probably starting to show it, uh, and I spin around, yes, I'm that good, Mike Jack, boy, I'm on that good, cause they don't really understand, man, the thing that I say, I mean, these words everywhere, you don't understand where they come from, cause if you did, it's the zoo, you dumb dumb, and everybody's mad right here, it's like bubble gum, I get it poppin', I mean, this boy is all droppin', and lyrically, homeboy, you know, I ain't stoppin', I'ma keep going. I'm a car out of control, no brakes, homeboy, I'm on the open Road. 95 and I'm pushing 220 And trust me homeboy, you can mad, I got plenty Man, these words gon' keep coming out my mouth like a dictionary Malcolm X, homeboy, you see this dictionary But they don't get it, by any means necessary I'ma get it, homeboy, because it's necessary And you better understand, man, it's very scary And they don't give a damn, they tap my phone They can keep it, homeboy, cause I got the microphone And I won't turn it off, cause it gotta stay on And they don't understand shit, I'm in my zone, call Payheim, cause I'ma get it out of it, they getting mad, homeboy, I got a lot of it, and you see here, I spin it like pottery, and I'm trying to get digits like the lottery, hey, body don't understand it how it go, and I swear to God, y'all, that's the route go, hey, body getting mad, this ain't a show, this is real life, see me in 3D.